Welcome back. During our last session, we discussed and we analyzed the actual uh, transformer, an ideal transformer. If you remember from the previous session, from the previous lecture, what we've done is we introduced the transformer importance to the circuit, to our power system, and then we studied the actual ideal transformer condition and we did an example regarding an ideal. Today, we are going to study the practical transformers. If you remember from the previous lecture, we defined four points that set the boundary of an ideal transformer. Point number one, an ideal transformer has no resistor inside the winding, R is zero. In a practical transformer, the winding has a resistance R, which means now I have I squared R exists. If you remember, the permeability mu of the core previously in an ideal transformer was infinite. Now it is not infinite, it is finite. So it has a value. So therefore now the reluctance R will have a value. More into the ideal transformer, we said that the flux phi is enclosed within the transformer boundary. In a practical cases, we do have leakage. We do have leakage. We do have we do have leakage. So phi, the flux, is not confined within the transformer. And number four, previously in an ideal transformer, we said you have no core losses. In a practical transformer, we have two types of core losses, real and reactive. So we have number four, we have real and reactive power losses within the core, within the actual core of the transformer. These four elements determine the boundary of determine the boundary of the practical transform. Same these four elements, the resistance, mu, the flux, and the core losses determine the boundary of an ideal transform. Now, if we take all these informations, for me as an electrical engineer, I need to represent this in a circuit. How do I represent this in a circuit? Let's see. Let's have a look. Now, this is my transformer. From the circuit of the transformer, I can see that my transformer has primary winding, secondary winding. So, because I have winding now, and it's a practical transformer, I have this. This represents the resistance and the inductance of the primary windings. So this known, I can call it R1, this is J, X1. This due to any, due to the wires, you know, every wire, is, can be presented by resistor and L inductor. <clears throat> what we discussed previously that we do have losses, we do have a core losses which is represented by real and reactive losses. This can be represented by a shunt losses 
which is I can represent it by this is called I want to call it R core, and this is due to a magnetizing system. I want to call it J X M. This then I can represent this. Let me move this side. On the set on the other side, I have second winding. The second winding I will have R2 J X2. This circuit from electrical point of view, from electrical engineering point of view now, I have a circuit. This is the primary side. And this will be the second. This I can call it I1 or I primary. This will be I2 or I secondary. This will be V1 or V primary. This will be V2 or V secondary. So now I have a circuit where I can physically perform normal circuit analysis. One more element. Remember this A, which is N primary, N secondary, and I have A. A is A is equal to N primary divided by N secondary. If you remember what we did previously into an ideal transformer, I can take this Z to the primary side. Because this Z seen from the primary side, all I have to do is multiply it by A squared. So in reality, I can go ahead and represent my circuit again by doing this. That's R1, JX1. This will be A squared R2, A squared JX2. This will remain the same. And that will be the one. So what we've done is we represent this impedance on the primary side by multiplying by A squared. That's exactly what we proved during our last lecture that the impedance on the secondary side seen from the primary is presented by A squared Z. In a practical, if you remember when we first mentioned that nowadays the transformers is almost 100% efficient. So these values can be neglected, can be neglected into a real practical and advanced transformer. So therefore, I can represent my transformer by the following. I can represent my transformer by having a, as seen from the primary side. This will be R1 plus A R2, and this will be J X1 plus A squared J X2. By neglecting the effect of this uh, shunt and losses. As we saw previously, as you saw previously, Our advanced technology into transformers allow us to have almost 100% efficient transformer. So therefore, the core losses in respect of the total power of a transformer can be neglected. Can be neglected. And now, let's take a moment and we will do one example. Let's take a moment and we will do one example.
The example that we're gonna do today is example 3.2 from from your book. So if we all can go to example 3.2 in our example. We have a single phase two winding. We have 20 kVA. We have 20 kVA. Single phase winding, 480 to 120 uh, volt. During a short circuit test, during a short circuit test, where rated current, rated current at rated frequency is applied to the 400, 400 an 80 volt winding with 120 volt winding with 120 volt winding winding to shorted the following reading are obtained so if i go back and i sketch my what they said on the winding to i apply a short circuit that's what the book said so i applied a short circuit on the 120 volt winding i applied i obtained v1 when i applied i had v1 these are the reading v1 is equal to 30 volt 35 volt p1 that's a 35 volt p1 it's a 300 watt. During an open circuit test where rated voltage is applied to winding two with winding one is open, the following reading. So now what will happen is I have this the second test. The second test. I have in here, I have an open circuit on this side, and the following were read. I have I2 and I have P2 were measured under open circuit test, and I have 12 amp and 200, 12 amp, and I have 200 watt. 12 amp and 200 watt. So, the first question from the short circuit test determine the equivalent series impedance referred to winding one. Neglect the shunt admittance. So let's explain it one more time. I have a single phase transformer. I performed a short circuit test and an open circuit test. I applied a voltage in here, rated voltage conditions. I end up, I apply a voltage in here. I short circuit the secondary and I end up v1 and p1 i measured the voltage and the power on from the primary side then i disconnect the circuit i have an open circuit test i applied a voltage source in here and an open circuit and what i did is i measured the current going in and the power going in the first item i need to do the first question is from the short circuit test i need to find the series impedance. I need to find Z of the transform. This is very easy. If I use the circuit, if I use the circuit that I actually determined before. Let's just sketch the circuit. Let's just sketch the circuit of a practical. If you remember the circuit that we did for a short circuit test, 
is basically I have this let's get a different color pen and I created a short circuit short circuit this is R equivalent JX equivalent from the previous slide we know the R equivalent is equal R1 plus A squared R2. Same for the X. We know what's X. Now we know that this transformer is remember this 480 to 120. Now I have a voltage. I have the voltage which is I have a voltage applied to D. What happened is, I, uh, if you remember, said during a short circuit test where rated current at rated frequency is applied, I have rated current, I have a rated current. What's the rated current for the system? I have the rated power and I have a rated voltage. So the rated current, magnitude, so I rated magnitude in this case, I have I rated it's equal to this divided by this 20 that's a magnitude 10 to the 3 divided by 480 the answer will be 41.667 m now great i have the power and i have the current i can find r equivalent can i What's the power? P equation is I squared divided by R. Because the real power reflects only because of the resistance value. Great. Now, so therefore, R will be equal to I squared divided by P, which is equal to 300 divided by 41.667. So, I squared. P is equal to I squared R. So therefore, R will be equal to P divided by I squared, which is equal to 300 divided by 41.667 amps. Sorry about this mistake. P is equal to the other one is P is equal to V squared over R. Just please don't get mistaken between these two elements. P is equal to I squared R. So therefore, R will be given, the answer for R will be 0 0.1728. 0 0.1728 ohm. Now, how do I find Z? How do I find Z? Great guys, look, I have a voltage, I have the power, and I have now the current. What's a Z equivalent? Look, Z equivalent would be equal to V, it's equal to IZ, it's equal to V1, divided by I, rated, which will give us 35, divided by, 41.667 Z equivalent will be 0 0.84 ohm 0 0.84 ohm This is Z equivalent This is Z equivalent Perfect! Now I have R and I have Z Z equivalent So the magnitude of Z is equal to square root of R squared plus x squared isn't it so now i can find what's x is x equivalent so this will give me this will give me the x equivalent 
x equivalent square root of z squared minus r squared, which the answer will be 0 0.822. 0.822 that's how now I find this value 0 0.1728 this will be J 0.822 and based on the system now I can find what z so now z equivalent would be 0 0.84 the angle of now you have r and j will give us an angle of 78.13 degrees Is that clear how I used a short circuit test to determine the equivalent impedance, equivalent resistance, equivalent inductance of my system? Now, the second question part of this is from the open circuit test determine the shunt admittance referred to winding one, neglect the series impedance. Let's take a moment to digest this information so I can delete this board and then we will go into the second question. Remember, when we did an open circuit test, what's an open circuit test? If I redraw my circuit back again, I have this circuit. If you remember this, I put a current in here. This is my open circuit test. So basically, all the value that I obtained from the previous one, which is I2, I have I2, 12 amps, 200 watt, is because of the actual shunt. It's because of the actual shunt, which is in this case, this is RC, this is J, X, N. Now, because they are in parallel, it's easier for me to recall the admittance. It's easier for me to recall the admittance. When they in parallel, I can call this the admittance of this one, the admittance of this one, and then I can uh, solve it in an easier way, in a very easier way. So what I do is, what I do is, I can recall G, C, Y, M, and B, M. So I can call this, the admittance, I want to call it G, C, I want to call it Bm and the total system for this will be will be what did they call it? exactly the same but the same name is Ym. So from the first one, from the first one, I have the in parallel this and this the in parallel voltage, isn't it? So now I apply the parallel voltage, which is P. 
it's equal to v squared over r. If you guys remember this, this equations. Is that clear? So, because now I'm using gc, so it's equal to v squared gc. Remember, all I'm doing is, in this case, I'm using the admittance. So all I have to do is, the admittance is 1 over the resistance. That's why I use this value. So now, gc would be equal to p squared p2 divided by v squared. All I have to do now is, and I'm interested in this, so now I have gc is equal to p, which is of this one, divided by v squared, which is equal to What's the rated voltage in here? What will be the rated voltage? It's 480. Because remember, when they said at the beginning of the example, they said short circuit winding now for this one, during an open circuit test where rated voltage is applied to winding 2. When you apply rated voltage on this winding, because of this 480, 120, when I apply a rated voltage in here because of this system in here I have 480 so across this one I have a 480 so I have 200 divided by 480 squared the answer of the system will be 0 0.000868 Siemens 0.000868 S is the unit of the admittance I can follow exactly the same concept. I can follow, follow the same concept now to find YM. Same what I did in the previous in the previous questions. I can follow exactly the same. What's YM? I have a voltage V1 and I have I1 because I have I2. I use the relationship between A and I2. I can find I1. And I go, what's y m? I just wanna want you to pay attention. What's y m it's equal to? In a previous one, in a previous one, v it's equal i r. V it's equal i z. Is that correct? Now, because you're using the admittance, v it's equal one over is i over y m. So y m it's I over V. You have to pay attention to this element, which is give us in this case, which is give us in this case, YM, it's, it gives us 120 divided by 480. Give us 120 divided by 480 times 12. This is 1 over A over 480. This represent this value represent the current and now because I found YM I can go and find VM and that's how I found the entire transformer characteristic using open circuit and short circuit test let's take a moment let's take a small break and we can do more example